Turning now to non-monetary items. These need to get separated into non-monetary items that are accounted for using an historic cost measurement system, for example inventory or property plant and equipment using the cost model, and non-monetary items accounted for using a fair value measurement system, for example biological assets or property plant and equipment using the revaluation model. We'll look at historic cost non-monetary items first. These are translated using the exchange rate at the date of the transaction. For example, when they are purchased or impaired. If gains or losses are usually recognized in OCI, then exchange differences are also recognized in OCI. If gains or losses are usually recognized in profit or loss, then the exchange differences are recognized in, yep, you guessed it, profit or loss. Which leads us to our second example. In this case, company A buys 100,000 US worth of land, paying cash. Its functional currency is AUD and it uses the cost model to account for the land. This purchase occurred on the 5th of October 2011 with a 30 June year end. There is also information available that the land was impaired on the 30th of June 2012 and that there was a reversal on the 30th of June 2013. The AUD USD exchange rate has fluctuated over that period of time and the US dollar value of the land has increased from $100,000 on purchase to $115,000 on the 30th of June 2013. To recognize the land is straightforward and works just the same as in example 1. Use the spot exchange rate on the date of purchase, which in this case is 0 0.9478, and gives an AUD value of 105507 on the 30th of June 2012, the land was impaired, even though the US dollar value increased, and this obviously seems somewhat counterintuitive. It's important that what we're concerned with is the change in the functional currency amount. Even though the land value in the US has increased from 100 to 105,000, the Aussie dollar has strengthened from 0 0.9478 to 1.0159 during the same time period. Using this new rate yields an Australian dollar valuation of 103,357. For ease of calculation, I'm going to assume that, th that this value is a recoverable amount, but obviously in a real sense, a proper calculation of the recoverable amount would be required. This is a drop of 2,151 and is recorded through profit and loss as usual. On the 30th of June 2013, the impairment was reversed. Not only has the land value in US dollar continued to increase, but the Aussie dollar has weakened. This leads to a calculation of the recoverable amount, and again with the same caveat as the previous year, of 124,824. This is above the ceiling of 105,507, so the change is simply a complete reversal of the prior year loss, which is taken through as the gain of $2,151.